I pretty much nailed my gear setup on this trip. Have you guys ever heard of a place called the Enchantments in Washington? It's in the Alpine Lakes wilderness and it's pretty much the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. Well, here's my entire gear loadout, everything that I brought for five days, four nights in the Enchantments. So we're gonna start off with the big four, starting with the backpack, a light AF curve 35 liter. It looks just like my 40 liter, but it's a different backpack entirely. It does not have the frame in it. It does not have a sewn on hip belt. So I was rocking the fanny pack as well. I was actually surprised I weighed this before I left and this pack actually weighed like 13 ounces uh, lighter than my other backpack. The main reason I wanted to drop a bunch of weights compared to my last trip to Colorado was because of this pack. I really wanted to use this thing. It's a little bit smaller, it's lighter, and it doesn't have a padded hip belt, which means for heavier loads, when you wanna cinch them down and ride that weight in your hips, you cannot do that with this. All the weight is gonna be hanging off of my shoulder straps. I knew before I went that if I couldn't get a five-day pack loadout uh, light enough to not have to use a hip belt, that I couldn't use this. Next up on the list is my sleeping bag. Now, this is actually a quilt made by Hammock Gear. This is their Econ top quilt. This is a 40 degree. And just because I'm going pretty lightweight on this trip doesn't really mean I was giving up a lot of comfort. So we weren't expecting a lot of rain. The temperatures were only supposed to dip into the lower 40s. I think we might have hit 30s one night and we weren't at super high elevation. So despite having a very lightweight backpack, I actually had a lot of comforts with me on this trip. Sleeping pad, I took the Thermarest NeoAir Uberlight. This is the regular length wide version. This pad is awesome. It only weighs like 10 ounces, even though it's a wide. I love this and I kind of hate it because I've literally had to blow this up in the middle of the night every single night I've used it yet. Future testing, we'll see if there's anything wrong with this. I'm gonna get it in my bathtub, see if there's a hole in it. I don't know, I love the pad. Uh, it's just so thin, it's a little scary. And number four, the big four, is my tent. Now this is brand new. One I'm sure I'll get a little bit of flack for, so I wanted a freestanding tent or a semi-freestanding tent for this trip because we're gonna be camping on a lot of rock. It was gonna be very hard to set up a trekking pole tent with stakes into rock. And I'm sure people are wondering why I chose this. I'm actually gonna make an entire video on my tent process for this. The Big Agnes Fly Creek uh, HV UL2. A tent that gets a lot of hate and I totally see why. It definitely has some issues, one being its wind resistance. I'm not gonna get too in depth on this, but uh, I was a little unsure after I bought this and I ended up really enjoying it. So this is my clothing bag, everything that I wasn't wearing on the trail. This is just an outdoor products dry sack, cheap from Walmart. My underwear were just Reebok synthetics. These were my running shorts. They're a five inch inseam, they're DSG, they're the Dick Sporting Goods brand. Started off day one and two with just a dry wicking t-shirt. Ended up switching on days three, four, and five to the Outdoor Vitals Altitude Sun Hoodie. I wore these Smart Wool low cut socks and I brought only one extra pair of these as well. This was something new for the trip as well. These were sent to me actually by Koros. I'm a Koros ambassador and they hooked me up with like a bunch, bunch of stuff. It's awesome. This is uh, made by a brand called Decathlon. You probably have heard of them because they have the uh, Four Claws or Four Claws like uh, puffy jacket that is an affordable, like good working puffy jacket. They're like running pants. I wanted these because I wanted a long pant for evenings when it gets cold. And also we were expecting quite a bit of mosquitoes going to this trip. Normally I bring like fleece pants and I cannot hike in those, they get way too hot. So I wanted uh, my legs, you know, somewhat cov covered. They could probably still bite through this, but I just wanted uh, long pants that I could hike in. I usually always bring this. This is my wind shirt. It's made by Mont Bell. I think it's called the Tachyon. Now this is a cool new piece. Piece. So this replaced my puffy jacket, my mountain hardware that I bring on every trip ever. This is actually a brand new coat made by Outdoor Vitals. And I wasn't sure if I was allowed talking about it, but I looked it up and it is on their website. You just can't buy it yet. This is called the Vario jacket. It's basically a little bit thicker, full zip version of their Ventus hoodie, their mid layer, and it has pockets on the side. This is something that I really enjoyed. So rain gear, I brought my frog tog rain pants that I cut down into shorts. 
shorts, didn't need them. One of the few pieces of gear that I could have left at home for this trip, but this is my rain jacket. This is brand new as well. This was sent to me by Koros. Uh, it's made by Decathlon. Now they have a couple different rain jackets. This is their lighter uh, trail running version. It wets out pretty quick, but it's cool. I like it so far. I like that it's packable in its own pockets. It did pretty well in the little bit of rain that we had to hike in. Now here's my infamous rain gloves. They're just dual layer nitrile. I really need to learn how to say that name. I don't, is it nitrile or nitrile? I think they're made by a brand called Venom. I, I have links down below in the description. People always wanna know, but these things are awesome because my hands and honestly my toes too, I don't know what it is. I get numb immediately. Even if it's a warm summer day, if it starts raining, my hands just go numb. They, they get cold immediately. So I have to keep them dry. Also, if it's super windy, pretty much weigh nothing and for how much warmth they provide. Uh, these always come with me. My shoes were the Hoka Torrents and they need replaced. I wore a hat, sunglasses, I don't know the brand. My GPS watch is the Koros Pace, best bang for the buck, I think, for GPS. It's like 200 bucks. I tracked our hikes for five days, didn't charge this thing at all during the trip, and I know I tracked upwards of maybe seven hours of hiking on a few of those days. I love Koros watches. If you're looking to buy one, use my code down below. Uh, you can get like a free accessory, and I get a little kickback from that as well. But on to the real stuff, so this is my backpacking chair, the Helinox Chair Zero in a, a custom printed Dyneema sack that Hilltop Packs actually sent me. Now I said I was trying to go super light on this trip, but you didn't actually think I was gonna leave the chair at home, right? I dropped so much weight on this trip that it really allowed for a few extra luxuries to be thrown in, like the chair, as well as my pillow. Now, I'm not talking about this thing. I'm not gonna mention what it is. I'm not gonna mention who makes it. I already made that mistake once. Lost 60 subscribers that day. Apparently the company gets a little political. Two things I don't talk about on this channel, politics and religion. I don't care what you believe, I'm not gonna judge you for it, and we're not gonna talk about it here. My trekking poles, these are the TAC Niner uh, carbon fiber poles that got chewed by the porcupine in Colorado. Now after I'm done talking, I'm gonna throw all this stuff in the pack and weigh it up because I'm actually really curious as to what my actual base weight was. I know what I started the trail at. My food bag, it's discontinued, but it was made by Light AF. It's made of Dyneema. My water bottles are the ones I always use, 23 ounce life water. Most people prefer the big, the big one liter ones. I just like the smaller ones. I think they're easier to get in and out of my pockets. My 32 ounce sort of squeeze bag. So not a lot of capacity, but there was water everywhere in this trip. So big water carries weren't really an issue. And inside my little water scoop here, I have my Sawyer squeeze inside a little Ziploc baggie so that if it's going to freeze at night, I can sleep with it and it won't drip all over me. Didn't lose it this time. Poop kit, it's the uh, Deuce of Spades camp trowel. I have a tiny bottle of hand sanitizer, a little packet of wet wipes, and toilet paper. Cook setup, it's seen better days. The, the bottom of my Reflectix koozie just ripped off. It was hanging on by like two pieces of the tape. And within that, 650 milliliter Tox titanium pot with lid. And inside of that is my coffee mug. This is a 450 milliliter Tox titanium. That's all I use that for is coffee. Bic lighter, BRS titanium stove that I keep in this little baggie because the one that it came in, I accidentally soaked in bacon grease. Oh, I almost forgot too. I keep a little piece of steel wool in there too. That's my pot holder so I don't burn my fingers. Now onto my ditty bag, which I just use like a gallon Ziploc bag. Within that, I had maybe one or two extra Ziploc bags in case I needed to waterproof camera gear. My first aid kit, which is really simple. Few pills, couple band-aids, a small microfiber towel that I cut down. This was a handy one, my mosquito head net. This is my Dyneema rock sack with my bear line to hang my food bag. Headlamp, it's the Petzl Ico Core. I think there's better headlamps out there than this, but I do like it. The battery life is awesome. And with the little stuff sack here, it actually becomes a lantern, which is really, really convenient, especially for filming. Learned my lesson in Colorado and I brought some sunscreen. Still got burnt, but it's the thought that counts. Brought my chopped and drilled toothbrush. And in Colorado, I kept bumming toothpaste off of Kevin. It was so nice to get that minty, fresh <laughs> taste in my mouth. Uh, a lot of times I'll just brush, and as long as you're brushing the plaque off, like it's still pretty effective. You just don't get the minty taste. Well, I brought toothpaste on this and it was nice. And actually when I was out there, uh, one of the guys I was with gave me a toothpaste tablet and those work really well. So I'm gonna buy some of those. Headphones for movie night in the tent and my phone. Now I'm gonna throw all this stuff in the backpack, see what my base weight is. But first I do bring camera gear. And I realize that most of you don't give a 
about that. But since you guys hate camera gear, I'm gonna give you a quick 15 second rundown of my camera setup because it has changed. So I got a new camera, it's a Canon RP. I have a 16 millimeter prime lens on it. Rode Video Micro microphone, four SD cards of various sizes because I don't f around. For batteries, this camera uses the same battery as my old one and it came with three. So that gives me a total of seven batteries. So I brought all seven. Other than a tiny little lens cloth and a tiny little ND filter, that's all my camera gear. Oh, almost forgot one thing. My Dollar General camp shoes, my flip flops. I thought for sure these things were gonna die in this trip. They're completely ripped, held strong, and even got me through the airports. All right, there she is. Couple things I didn't mention. I have a Peak Designs camera clip here. I have a trash bag, which is my pack liner, and I also have my Dairy Queen spoon. Those are th the only things I didn't mention. Now, this should be fairly accurate because I even put in my empty food bag, my empty bottles. Uh, as many empty Ziploc bags as I did when I start started. So without consumables, fuel, water, food, this is my very accurate base weight, not including camera gear. That's not even good. <laughs> 13? 13 pounds? This thing weighed like nothing on the trail. Like day one, usually you got a pretty heavy pack because uh, of all the food. This thing felt great on day one. I was hoping to be in the tens. That is strange. How is that a 13 pound base weight? Is that even right? So that being said, my camera gear should be right around uh, four and a half pounds. I know I started the trip with five and a half pounds for food, which was a big improvement on my eight pound food bag from my previous five day trip. Fuel canister, one 23 ounce bottle filled up and two canned beverages. Weighed in at the trailhead at 26 point something pounds. It felt really good. I started Colorado with 28 pounds and this felt so much better. I didn't miss the hip belt at all. I thought immediately in the whole trip that I did did right on the gear. So 26 pounds is a sweet spot for starting a trip because it's only gonna get lighter once you start eating away at that food bag. But I was very happy with everything I brought on this trip. I feel like there was only a few things that I could have left home. Dropped weight in a lot of areas like the pack and the quilt. I think my clothing got a little heavier. Tent was a little bit heavier. My pillow was definitely heavier but at the end of the day the numbers really don't matter it's about how good did it feel this setup felt amazing for me and you know with going ultralight and everything it's fun to like tweak your stuff and get super light but I mean it didn't hurt so why go any lighter this setup worked great now if you're watching this video as it was just posted you'll have to wait like probably two weeks for the trip video for this one. But if you're late to the party, you can click right here. Click this little guy to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.